Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to solo plugger as a rogue to get the Barman Shanker. So just right away I'll show you what the Barman Shanker is. Great dagger, really slow. There's also a few other items that drop from plugger. Of note, there's the Mixologist Tunic, which is a very good chest. The Goblin Jumper Cables, which you can actually sell on the auction house on my server. They're about five gold right now. And uh, Assorted Greens as well as obviously the Barman Shanker. So let's get right into how to solo it. All right, so the first thing you need to do to get to, is actually get to Plugger. So you need to open a few gates. You're going to need to be, I believe it's 250 lock picking to open everything. I was 270 when I did this, so I can confirm that if you're 270 plus in lock picking, you'll be fine. But you need to go through these gates. Got to watch out for the elemental. Um, so go left as soon as you go through the instance and pick a couple gates and we're going to head over to the shadow forged lock. Once you've picked the lock, it's pretty easy to get to the boss, but there's a couple, uh, a couple places where you need to watch out if you're lower level. So as you can see, I'm 54 when I'm doing this. If you're 60, you can actually stealth right up to this lock and pick it. But because I'm 54, I actually have to CC these mobs here. And so I sap one, gouge the next. If your gouge doesn't work, you can blind. And after that, you just vanish. Now, a couple times my vanish failed here. I really don't know why. Let me know in the comments below if you know why vanish would fail in that situation. But all right, so up next, this is a good place to hide if you're trying to get around the fire guard. There's going to be two fire guards that patrol, and you need to be really careful of them because they have a uh, fire AOE that ticks like every two, three seconds. So if you use like stealth too close to them, it'll actually break your stealth and do fire damage. So that second patrol that we just passed patrols all the way down this hall into the left. So you need to watch out for that patrol and you sometimes need to hide in this corner over here. If the patrol is, you know, heading back towards you. So let's take it by that patrol. So this is pretty easy, the, the first part of the run. There's a couple tricky stealth spots once you're, if you're lower level, but as a 60, you should be able to stealth right in. Um, just for reference, my character's gear is, you know, pretty decent, but nothing, nothing too crazy. So I think anyone that's like 54 plus can easily solo this. Um, as you can see here, my uh, distract resisted. So I'll skip ahead. You actually do need distract to get by these guys if you're low level like I am. So you sneak by these guys and you're gonna wanna hug the right wall here because there is a fire elemental here, but there's also a patrolling fire elemental that comes down through here, down the hallway. And I think we'll see him right, if he's here right now and he patrols down the hallway, you need to watch out for him. You can see him heading back towards him. So I just hug the right wall Got stuck here for a second, but then jump down to the menu factory. Now here, this is actually uh, deceptively tricky if you're lower level. There's I'm constantly like panning my camera back and forth because there's a lot of different mobs that can catch you in stealth. These technicians uh, are constantly patrolling around. You can see one almost caught me there, and they have a pretty large you know radius of detection. Now these elementals that we're coming up to here. There's two ways to get by them. The If either of the elementals are level 54, you can actually just sneak right behind the mob at 54. Now, if you're high level, just go down the middle. But if you're low like me, um, you can either sneak around them if they're low level, or as you'll see at the next pack, I'll show you what to do. Uh, so this is how you sneak around them, but I'll show you what to do if they're high level and you don't think you can sneak behind them like this. So I always target the higher level and I distract the higher level elemental because I'm not really worried here about the 55 detecting me. I'm worried about the 54 that you just saw looking at me as I snuck by. Um, so as you can see, it took me three minutes, 50 seconds. That's how long, usually about four minutes to stealth all the way to the Grim Guzzler. So this is where Plugger is. Now the enemies are, are neutral. They're not going to attack you and you're, you're home free in terms of the stealth mission and we're gonna head over to Plugger. So step one achieved, we, uh, 
we made it to Plugger. Now, step two is, I don't know if you can see here, right as we come in, Plugger has four patrons right next to him. So if you don't know how this room works, the Plugger himself sells alcohol, and there's also some alcohol on the table here, these beer mugs, and these patrons, if you throw, you can actually throw the beer on the ground and the patrons will walk to it and they won't attack you until they're done drinking the beer. So what you're going to do is you're going to want to lure these four enemies away from Plugger so that you're in a 1v1 when you decide to finally fight them. So I'm going to head over to the corner and um, I just have it hotkeyed here, but I'm throwing the alcohol. And the first time you come in here, you are going to need to talk to Plugger and buy it. It's like six silver each. But I'll show you after we kill Plugger, um, you can just take, you can just take the beer right on the counter there, and it's going to be free, free to take, and you'll get like five, five per run. So it's just right there. So you can pick it up after you kill Plugger. If you were to pick it right now, he would see you stealing, and he would immediately become aggressive, and um, you'd have to like vanish or run away. So as you're pulling these guys they don't attack you and they're going straight for the beer so you can ambush you can backstab you are able to do whatever you want and as long as they don't reach the alcohol they won't drink it and it'll lure the next guy so i've only placed one so far and it's lured two patrons over so if you want to you know save as much money and not have to buy more alcohol from the patron that's how you do it you, you kill the enemies before they hit the mug and so you might have to end up doing, you know, a bunch of gouging and kidney shotting, um, but it'll save you a little bit of silver if, if you want to. And some of these guys on the left will be attracted first before the, uh, before the patrons drive by plugger. But these next two guys are going to patrol on over. So I'll just skip ahead. Just killing some patrons, just throwing them over, throwing the beer in the, in the corner. This is probably the last one right here. So now we're about to fight the plugger. And first of all, my strategy against the plugger is going to be number one, put away your dagger. If you do have a slow main hand, you can swap out. So for example, I put in the thrash blade and the reason for this is because you plugger's immune to CC. You can't gouge him. You can't kidney shot him. It looks like there's another ad. I'll just kill him here. So you do not want to use a dagger if you have a slower weapon available to you. So I'm going to use Thrash Blade so that my, uh, in this case, Hemorrhage, if you're playing combat, it's going to be Sinister Strike. It does more damage. So I would recommend equipping a slow weapon. Uh, planning this fight out as if you're combat, even if you're, even if you're not. Now, I am, for this fight, I'm equipping the Sunken Temple Trinket and then just the one from Hinterlands, so no crazy trinkets. If you are an engineer, I would definitely recommend you use any pet trinket. So that's the chicken or any of the dragonlings. Um, any pet trinket will allow you to vanish and band-aid. Um, so that's just a... Uh, but I'm going to do it here with no preparation uh, as a PvP spec and... I'm not going to use any engineering trinkets. So any of you, and I just have a potion. I don't, I, I don't even, not going to even use a major potion. So you guys can definitely do this. I'm not, you know, crazily geared or anything like that. Uh, and, you know, I guess the initial strategy, so don't worry about that. You're going to be able to, to kill him. You're going to be, any 154 and up can do this. You just have to know the strategy. So right before I uh, play me killing Plugger here, I'll tell you my initial strategy. I press sprint. And the reason I press sprint is because we're going to be running back into the cubby to fight him. And I want to get back into the cubby before he has a chance to shadow bolt me. Um, so Plugger has three abilities. He has shadow bolt, he has immolate, and he has banish. Your goal in banish is just cast. If there's more than one enemy, he'll banish one of them. So if you're 1v1ing, he will never cast it. So your, your number one goal is to never get immolated. Your number two goal is to avoid as many shadow, goal, shadow bolts as possible. Um, so right away, you'll see I'll just, I open with a grow and immediately run to the cubby to avoid getting shadow bolted. And we're going to fight him over in this cubby so that we can line of sight. Now here, I shoot him with a bow, 
what I should have done is come right out uh, behind the wall and shoot him again with the bow. You can shoot him like, you know, sometimes three, four times. For whatever reason, I didn't do it this time, but you can get a few more bow shots if you cancel their shadow bolts. And so now you're gonna see the general strategy. So you can see I just started off, I used my trinket, hit him a few times, and then right as that shadow bolt was about to complete, I ran behind this wall. So the whole fight, all you're gonna be doing is attacking plugger and then running behind the wall. Uh, and this is, imp you, you cannot let immolate cast on you or you're gonna be in deep trouble. You can already see I'm taking a lot of damage. Look how low I'm getting already, right? So I, I pop my cooldowns, I pop my evasion. I always pop my cooldowns with my evasion so that I never feel the need to run away and heal during my cooldowns. So evasion is going to keep me safe during the cooldowns. So always pop them together. Uh, so this is not, yeah, this is not a good spot. If he gets too close to the wall, sometimes the shadow bolt goes through the wall. So you want to be careful of that. Um, and so you can see I'm just attacking him, running behind a wall, and you know just brute forcing him down at this point. Now I drank my health potion here, had to run behind the wall for the immolate. So I decided to bandage here. Um, I was in good shape. I decided to go for the uh, bandage, just to get a few more points of health and then finish him off. However, I, I don't know if you see where my character is. He's a little too close to the barrels and there's like a glitch or a bug where Plugger thinks you're like on top of the barrels or something. And as you can see, he just runs straight back. So right now he is running straight back. And if you are in this bad position by the barrel and he runs straight back, he will pull the entire room. So I actually broke my bandage and I only got one, one tick from the bandage because I was worried about him resetting the room. So when you do this, try and get a better bandage off. Um, even with a bad bandage, you can see I'm gonna get him down here. It got a little close. Um, but if you, you know, you bring potions, you bandage better, easily soluble, especially if you're combat and you have like adrenaline rush and you can see, boom, there's the plugger and that's how you solo it. And it's a pretty quick run. As you can see, eight and a half minutes on the video here, um, to not only get to plugger, but kill him. And then from here, I, I pick the food cause you know, free food is always nice. And yeah, some mob like frame kind of tripped me out there but anyway pick the meat if you want it and then there's also the ale to pick up so oh one other thing i wanted to show you guys you guys know you just right click on the the beer and you'll get it and that's the same beer that you throw in the corner i also wanted to show you guys how to reset so i pulled here you can see the whole room's going to come after me if you jump on these barrels and jump up on this ledge you will evade and I didn't show it here, but if you see this ledge where my cursor is, you can actually follow the ledge and go right. So there's a situation where like plugger could be sitting here and casting on you and you be in line of sight and he can actually hit you. So if you're in that situation, run, run down that ledge and evade him that way. Um, so that's after that, that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, the runs are pretty quick. Just to give you an idea of kind of the drops I got and how long it took for me to get the barman shanker. I ran it 22 times. The barman shanker dropped once. The recipe for the jumper cables dropped three times. The mixologist tunic dropped four times. And I got all the rest of the drops were greens. So it is listed as a 10-11% 10, 10, drop on Wowhead. So it's not too, too bad. And the runs are pretty quick. And from here, uh, if I'm solo, I'll just log out, wait 10 minutes, log back in, and I'll be at the front of the instance. If you have anyone online, you can log off and have them reset the instance, um, invite them to your group first, have them reset the instance, and then you log back in and you're at the front of the instance. And you can just do it again. So the last thing I can mention, um, if you're struggling with this, you can try and pick up like a shadow protection potion to help with the shadow shadow bolt damage but you should really try and cancel every spell by running behind the walls and uh never ever this is a big tip never die um always vanish and even if it's like it's you're so close to killing them uh unless you're certain you're going to kill them always vanish just wait wait for your cooldowns retry it's not worth the durability it's not worth the long run back um it takes a long time to run back to your corpse so and you have to redo the whole stealth through so it took four minutes alone just to stealth here. You're going to have to do that again 
if, if you die. So always either try and reset or vanish. Um, don't, don't risk it. And you're going to be paying for it if you have to do the full run back. So uh, that's all, and good luck getting your dagger.